Hey, my name is Tyler, and I'm about to show you some really cool stuff in DaVinci Resolve and some cool tips on how to expose in your camera. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and show you some quick tips on how to expose in your camera to not even use noise reduction or barely have to use it. It's really up to you if you wanna do this. It's okay if you don't. Um, but we're gonna jump in here and check out some cool stuff. Okay, so we're on DaVinci Resolve. We have two clips here. One is brighter than the other in exposure. And the way I achieve that is I basically put four stops of ND on one and the other one no stops of ND. So it's exposed a lot brighter. So the first one that's darker, this image right here that's darker, this actually is exposed correctly and exposed for my skin. So it's around 70, 75 IRE. And this one's well overexposed right here, right? Okay, so what we're gonna take a look at first, typically before you add anything on your timeline, you're going to wanna do your color management. So let's go to the bottom right cog wheel and check out color management. So on here, we have DaVinci Y RGB, Timeline Color Space, DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and Output Color Space, Rec 709A. Um, the reason I use Rec 709A is because there is known gamma shifting when you export. So basically, you think you have this image on your video, that you export it, and then there's like these slight shifts in color, and it's not exactly what you want. So if you export a Rec 709A, which is essentially Rec 709 Gamma 2.2, your image is going to be more correct. So output color space Rec 709A, DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, we're choosing that because it's the widest color space and you wanna get the most out of your image first. And this color management is a node-based color management, uh, basically meaning you're gonna to wanna to apply color space transform on your node tree to get your image into DaVinci Wide Gamut. So let's get started. Okay, so I'll go to my color page right now and on um, the actual first image right here, we're gonna add a color space transform, add that on here, we're going to put our camera, which is DJI Ronin 4D, so DJI D Gamut and DJI D Log, we're gonna put that in DaVinci Wide Gamut, the widest color space. All righty, so we got that in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna press Option S like five times, one, two, three, four, five. So we have six nodes, and this is just the in-between so we can grade. Okay, perfect. So on the very last node, what I'm putting here is another color space transform. And I'm going to basically get DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec 709A. So what I like to do is I'll grab the first node, I'll press Option, I'll drag it over here, and I have a color space transform here now. These need to be swapped, so I swap it, and then I basically change this over to the Rec 709, and then Rec 709A, right? So we got that image it looking pretty good. Alrighty, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a film emulation that I like to use. It is Filmbox. So I'll add Filmbox on here, and Filmbox is probably one of the best film emulation plugins. If you don't believe me, just look at the price. It's expensive, it's really good, it's better than the rest, in my opinion. Okay. So we have this image on here. We're going to make it into DaVinci Wide Gamut under the modes for Filmbox. So DaVinci Wide Gamut image is still looking a little crazy. And the reason for that is we have a color space transform at the end that's already in 709. So instead of the display color space being Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, we're gonna go to RCM SDR. So Resolve Color Management SDR, basically translating it properly. We have three modes in the actual film box, standard, extended, and custom, um, and full. So I like to go with extended just because it's it's better for digital display transforms for this film emulation. Um, but standard and full are just, just creating more of a film look. So for this example, I wanted to get something that has more of that um, regular extended digital look to the camera, but still having that film look to it. Next, I'll just turn off my grain inhalation for now so we can just see a clean image. And 
what we have here is our image and I'll press shift F to see it larger. And what we have here is whenever we zoom in, we see this noise right here, right? So we see this noise and it's, when we pre play it back, I mean, it's kind of prominent. It's not too crazy, especially whenever you zoom out, you're not gonna see it too insanely. And you might use mild noise reduction on this, um, but it's not too bad, right? And noise reduction, the only bad thing about noise reduction is it'll soften your image, but also it's hard on your processor, meaning your image is not gonna play back at you know a full 24 frames per second unless you have some beast ass computer. Okay, so why I'm doing this is because I'm going to go back here and this is the exposure I wanted initially, but whenever I look at this image, the one that's brighter without the NDs on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy over this grade onto this image, apply this grade, image is super bright, right? What I like to do is bring down the exposure on the image, right? So what I do is I'll basically grab a gallery still of that first image. I'll grab a still, I'll go to the second one and I'll basically split it so I could see the difference. And I'll turn this gallery off and we can kind of zoom in and see this difference. And what I do is I'll go to the HDR wheels um, and under global on the second node, I will bring down the exposure of the image on the global. So I'll bring this down to it gets to a point where it is essentially the same as the original image, right? So that is pretty close right there. I'll press Z to zoom out on it. And what we can do is we can take a look at this and turn off the wipe and let's try to find some grain now. Yeah, so there is no grain. And when you look at the other image, that's the grain. That's no grain. That's the grain. No grain, super clean. So this is exposing to the right, essentially. You don't necessarily have to do this, but whenever you want the cleanest image exposing to the right, when you know how to do it, it's amazing. So basically you're exposing to the point where it's almost about to be clipping, but you don't see any yellow or red in the false color. And typically the best ways to do this is to have a LUT on your camera. That's, you know, a two or three stop drop, maybe four stops, just depending on your camera and basically looking at the image, how you want it to, and then looking at the log image and making sure it's not clipping. Um, another way to do this is drop, you know, three or four stops of ND on there. Look at the image. Does it look how you want to whenever you're going to do it in post? And then take off those NDs, press record, bring it back down and post. You have less noise. Super cool. Okay, so now back to the tips we're talking about. So that's the first one that's going over the camera exposure and everything like that. The next thing I want to go over is actually getting our skin the way we want it to, right? So what I do typically is I will add a node after the color space transform at the end, and I'll add one more node. And you can do this multiple ways. You don't have to use this method. You don't have to buy this DCTL. I use this. It's a little bit quicker for me. So I'll put in a DCTL called mono nodes balance. I will add that on the end and we see our image is purple, right? There's three different colors on this DCTL. There's purple, there's yellow, there's green. You want your skin to be more in the yellow, right? So what we can do is we can go to film box and then control the temperature and the tint and kind of get it closer to a place that we like, right? So maybe like right here and the image is looking pretty decent, right? And maybe we want to add a little contrast to this image to kind of boost it up a little bit. And yeah, it's looking a lot better. But say if we had our image and it was more blue, right? So if I put on the full actual print on here, we look at our image, we go back to our temperature and tint, 
we turn down the tint a little bit, maybe turn up the temperature. We'll go to node three, we'll turn down the highlights because it's a little bit brighter on this film print. So we'll turn down the highlights quite a bit on this, right? And then we'll go back to film box. We'll change the tint around a little bit. Okay, so the image is kind of purple and we want it to be in that yellow, right? But we're gonna do this. So we're gonna grab a color compressor. We're gonna grab this color compressor. We're gonna put it on the node right before the balance one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Shift H. And when I press Shift H, it's gonna turn off that balancing node at the end with those colors. And what you wanna do is you want to actually qualify your skin. So we'll grab this qualifier. We'll drag it across to where we want to. We will adjust how we need on the colors. We will adjust the luminance value to a point where we like it. And then we'll mess around with the saturation a little bit and kind of get it into this fine place that we like. Okay, we'll clean up the blacks. We'll clean up the whites. A little bit. And then we'll denoise. We'll tighten up the luminance a little bit. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. I like that so far. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to press shift H again. Now that we have it qualified shift H again. And now that kind of wonky colors coming up again. And what I do is I'll press on color compressor. I'll press the little qualifier key and I'll zoom in on my skin and find the point that I like the most on the skin that looks most like skin color, right? So usually we're going to be picking a yellow point. So I'll pick 202, 202. 83. Okay, so I click that, I zoom back out, I compress the hue. When I start compressing this hue, it starts bringing my skin over into that yellow that I like, right? So now we have that compressed, we'll turn off that balance at the end. And now we can look at our skin and we can look at before and after. Before, after. And this is a great tool for uneven skin. You don't necessarily need to use this all the time and you don't want to push it too hard because you don't want to suck the life out of your image by having some really plasticky looking thing that's all solid one color. So use the actual compression hue as, as you will. Um, I wouldn't compress saturation or compress luminance on the color presser, but the compress hue is a great tool on the color compressor. Okay, so now we back out and see on this, you don't necessarily need this DCTL to do this. You know, we can reset this node and we can basically press shift H again, qualify our image, get it back into that place that we like the most, right? We'll just save right here for now, right? We'll denoise it a little bit. Clean blacks, clean whites. Okay. And all you can do is you basically, you can grab a little power window, put it on here, make it a little bit smaller, right? As small as you want to and drag it around. And if you go to your vector scope and look at this, you can see on the vector scope where the skin is, right? So you can kind of start dragging around to see, oh wait, which part of the skin do I like the most, right? Um, maybe this is the closest point I like, right? So what you can do is you could turn off that power window, look at your image and see, turn the power window back on, right? Add the color compressor on there and then grab the qualifier, Click on this, turn off the power window, press shift H again, 
compress the hue. And essentially you're getting the same exact thing, right? I press shift S, press command D. You're getting the same thing. It's just that balancing DCTL is just a lot more accurate to look at and you're not gonna be guessing what is the best color. If it's yellow, it's probably the better color. Okay, so we compress that hue. That's pretty cool, right? So now our image is looking fat and amazing. Next up, we are gonna take a look at our blacks, right? So on here on this image, if we look at it, maybe we don't want it to be as dark in the background, right? Our bla blacks are a little bit too low. We can look at our waveform and see they're, they're not at zero at all. So they're completely fine. But if we want to offset the blacks and not just necessarily lift the shadows or lift the dark, there's a cool little button on here called black offset under the HDR wheels. And I don't see it being talked about a lot, but it's a really quick method to like raise your blacks and, and it's a very filmic way in my opinion. So if we go to our HDR wheels right here. We're on node number four. So we go to our HDR wheels and we go to black offset. We can lift these blacks up gently. So if I press shift F again, and we command D, we can kind of see the before and after. It's gently lifting these blacks to um, a point that I like to, right? So if you look at the actual scopes on the waveform, you can see the slight shift in black pushing upwards. And this is a nice, just little easy trick. So you're not, you know, messing around with too many things to get your blacks lifted. It's a quick little offset. And I really do love it a lot. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Come back for more and I'll see you soon. Oh yeah, um, like and subscribe and I love you.